Let not your hearts be troubled. Now Jesus, he, uh, uh, in John 14 verse 27, he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's near the end of the chapter, uh, but the chapter starts out with the same, uh, not just the exhortation, it actually starts out with the commandment uh, to not be troubled, to not be afraid. And so that is, I would say, is the burden of John 14. It is to equip the heart of the apostles, but ultimately to equip the end time church of how to live without a troubled heart, to live a, a heart without fear, uh, to live without anxiety in light of the pressures that are uh, coming uh, to the earth. Um, uh, Jesus in Matthew 24, he addressed three distinct emotional dynamics, which include a deceived heart. Instead of deceived, we can say confused. A, a heart that is confused, that a heart that lacks clarity about uh, what is going on and therefore unable to make uh, 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 wise decisions in the midst of the pressure <clears throat> that is taking place. And so Jesus addresses these distinct emotions. Number one, he addresses the issue of a troubled heart. And that's what we're going to spend most of our time looking at in just a moment in light of John 14. A troubled heart. Number one, a troubled heart, I believe, leads to a cold heart. A troubled heart leads to a cold heart. And a cold heart be ends up a confused heart. I'll say this again. A troubled heart, a heart weighed down with anxieties, fear, worry, uh, ends up a cold heart. Um, worry and anxiety, I really believe that it snuffs out the, uh, the word of God in our hearts. It snuffs out the, uh, 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 the work of God in our hearts if we continue to yield to uh, a worry and anxiety. There's an unfortunate thing that has happened over time, and that is that worry has been treated as a personality trait. Uh, but it's not. Uh, to put it plainly, worry is a sin. Uh, Jesus said, do not worry. It, it, it's, it's an imperative. It is a commandment. A uh, lot to be said about, about the, the nature of worry, but the real nature of worry at the end of the day is where we have more confidence, for lack of better terms, in our leadership than the confidence in the leadership of the Lord. And, um, you know, Jesus, the anecdote that Jesus, one of the anecdotes that Jesus gives for worry is Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. And so the way that I think about worry, worry is when we pursue the things that God said he would add. Say this again. Worry is when we, when we go after the thing that God said he would add. He said, look, seek me first and these things will be added. What anxiety does is we seek the thing that he said he would add. In other words, we're seeking to do what God, we're seeking to do God's part. So two days before the Lord's Supper, Jesus prophesied these things to them and he calls them to a life of peace. John 14, two days later, Jesus shows them how to walk out Matthew 24, 6 and 7. So two days before, he tells them, hey guys, here's the pressures that are coming. Don't worry. Don't be given over to fear. Two days later, they're at the Lord's table, John 13, John 14. He begins to instruct them line upon line how to live victoriously in peace and quietness of heart and rest in the Lord. The remedy for anxiety, simply said, is fellowship with the Lord, intimacy with the Lord, devotion to the Lord, speaking with the Lord, whatever term we want to use, but it is the cultivating of our relationship with the Lord that is the primary remedy to anxiety. Anxiety. 